Okay, in this video, we'll be talking about voltmeter, ammeter, shunt, and also multiplier. Okay, you know that a voltmeter must be connected in parallel to measure the potential difference. For example, a voltmeter of resistance 60 ohm is connected in parallel with the resistor of resistance 40 ohm. What is the reading on the voltmeter? Okay, first of all, you need to find the equivalent resistance of here. Then only you use the equation for the potential divider to find the potential difference across here, which is the reading on the voltmeter. And then the voltmeter now has a resistance of 1 million ohm. Find the reading on the voltmeter. So now, once again, you find the equivalent resistance here. Okay, actually, even if you don't have a calculator, you know that this term is very small. So this whole term is almost equal to zero. Therefore, R is almost like 40 ohm. So you know that when the voltmeter has a very, very high resistance, the equivalent resistance actually does not change. That is initially is 40 ohm and then now it's 40 ohm. And then just now, if the voltmeter has a very small resistance, therefore the equivalent resistance drops. That is initially is 40 and then now it drops to 24 ohm. Okay. And then the potential difference across here is like this. You know that a good voltmeter should have a very, very high resistance so that the reading would be very accurate. Okay? So now an ammeter of resistance is connected in series with the circuit. Just now, you know that the voltmeter has to be connected in parallel. And then now you know that an ammeter has to be connected in series. Okay? And then the ammeter is connected here. What is the reading on the ammeter? V equal to I times all the resistance. Okay, then you get this value. Then now, another ammeter of resistance of 0 0.01 ohm is connected in series. And then once again, please find the reading on the ammeter. You know that the resistance of the ammeter is so small compared to the other resistance. Therefore, this current is a better measurement of the current of the circuit. So, you know that an ammeter should not have too high resistance so that it does not cause some potential drops inside the circuit. Okay, so please explain why a good emitter has a low resistance. The emitter is connected in series and therefore the emitter should have a very low resistance so that it does not cause the loss of potential difference inside the circuit. And then explain why a good voltmeter has a high resistance. The voltmeter is connected in parallel with the resistor. Therefore, the voltmeter should have a very, very high resistance so that almost no current can flow to the voltmeter itself. Okay? Which statement is true of a voltmeter when it is used to measure the potential difference across an electrical load? The current which flows through the voltmeter is negligible. Yes, this is true. Because the voltmeter should have a very, very high resistance so that almost no current can flow through the voltmeter itself. The same current flows through the load and the voltmeter. No, most of the current should not pass through the voltmeter. Okay, so this is wrong. The voltmeter has high resistance, thus the effective resistance of the circuit remains constant. Okay. Just now, when I say that the resistance of the voltmeter is very high, then the equivalent resistance does not change. That is, initially it's 40 ohm. And then after you connect the voltmeter in parallel with it, it is still 40 ohm, okay? When the resistance of the voltmeter is very, very high, okay? 
So the voltmeter has high resistance, thus the effective resistance of the circuit remains constant. Okay, the voltmeter has low resistance. Wrong. The voltmeter should have a very high resistance. The resistance of a resistor R can be determined by using a moving coil ammeter and a voltmeter. This is circuit A. This is circuit B. Explain why the value of R determined is not accurate in each circuit. In circuit A, you know that the ammeter will measure the current that flows through the resistor and also the voltmeter. So this is not very accurate. In circuit B, the voltmeter will measure the potential difference across the resistor and also the potential difference across the ammeter. So this is also not a very good circuit. Explain which circuit is a better way of determining a small resistance. When the resistance of the resistor is very small, that means the resistance of the voltmeter will be comparably higher. And therefore, circuit A is better because when R is small, the current that flows through the R is very large. Therefore, very little current that flows through voltmeter. So circuit A is better. In circuit B, when R is very small, you know that the potential difference across the ammeter will be quite big compared to the potential difference across the resistor. So you know that in circuit B, if R is very small, then the reading of the voltmeter is very very not accurate because the voltmeter reading will read the potential difference across R and also across ammeter. Okay, actually, both shunt and multiplier are just resistors. Okay, now you already know voltmeter and ammeter, but I have not introduced you to galvanometer yet. Galvanometer can add like both the ammeter and also voltmeter. That is, we can use galvanometer to measure potential difference and also the current. If you want to use the galvanometer to measure the current, and then when you want to measure very very large currents, you have to use a shunt so that your galvanometer does not burn up. Okay, you use a shunt, and then the shunt has a very very low less resistance, so that when the shunt is connected in parallel with the galvanometer, most of the current will flow through the shunt. Okay. If there's too much current flowing through your galvanometer, I'm afraid your galvanometer will burn out. Okay, so you use the shunt to protect your galvanometer. So you know that the resistance of the shunt should be smaller than the resistance of the galvanometer, which is R2 smaller than R1. So that the current that flows through the shunt will be higher than the current flows through the galvanometer, which is I2 is greater than I1. And then since they are connected in parallel, you know that the potential difference across here is the same as the potential difference across here. So by you can get the equation like this. And then by using Kirchhoff's first law, you know that I equal to I1 plus I2. On the other hand, when you want to use the galvanometer to measure a very very large potential difference, you have to use a multiplier. A multiplier is just a resistor of resistance higher than that of the galvanometer. And then the multiplier is connected in series with the galvanometer. When they are connected in series, you know that the current that flows through the galvanometer is the same as the current that flows through the multiplier. Okay? And then the resistance of the multiplier should be much higher than the resistance of the galvanometer. Okay, therefore the potential difference across the multiplier is much larger than the potential difference across the galvanometer. A voltmeter has a resistance of 1000 ohm and a full scale deflection FSD of 2.5 volt. If the voltmeter is to be used to measure a maximum voltage of 10 volt, a resistor of resistance, 
Okay, so now you know that the maximum potential difference across the voltmeter is 2.5 volt. And then you want to measure 10 volt. Okay, so you have to connect a resistor in series with the voltmeter. And then here is 2.5 volt. 10 minus 2.5 is equal to 7.5. Okay, and then now you are given the resistance of the voltmeter and then you also know the maximum potential difference across the voltmeter. Therefore, you can find the maximum current. Okay, the maximum current is this. And then since they are connected in series, the current that flows through the resistor is the same as the current that flows through the voltmeter. Okay, so by using V equal to IR, you can find the resistance of the resistor. Okay. Actually, this is a multiplier because a multiplier is just a resistor with very, very high resistance connected in series with the voltmeter. Which is not true about the shunt used to convert a galvanometer into an emitter. A shunt has a very low resistance. Yes, this is true. A shunt prevents current from flowing through the galvanometer. No, actually you can say that the shunt will minimize or reduce the current from flowing through the galvanometer, but it cannot possibly prevent. That is, there are still some very little current that will flow through the galvanometer itself. The shunt is connected in parallel with the galvanometer, yes. The shunt diverts part of the current from flowing through the galvanometer. Yes, in fact, only a very, very small part of the current will flow through the galvanometer itself. A moving coil instrument has a coil resistance of 100 ohm and gives a full-scale deflection FSD current of 500 microampere. Find the shunt resistance required if the instrument is to be used as an emitter with a full-scale deflection of 5 ampere. Okay, so you know that the total current is 5 ampere. Then you have to use a shunt which is connected in parallel with the meter. Therefore, since they are connected in parallel, the potential difference across the meter is the same as the potential difference across the shunt. Okay, so by using this formula, you can find the resistance of the shunt. And then you know that the resistance of the shunt should be very small compared to the resistance of the meter. Okay, so that most of the current will flow through the shunt and then very little current will flow through the meter. So in the next video, we will talk about potential divider, potential meter and also Wheatstone bridge.